for, I don't know, simplicity here. The average value of a function. We learned that um, we know something about integrals here, area underneath a curve, like from A to B here. Uh, the area underneath there. Okay, if this is f of x, the integral underneath, the area underneath there is, what is it? Uh, integral from a to b of that of that function, right? That's not the mean value theorem. Oh, for derivative, yeah, I put it on the wrong side. Okay, let's go over here. Okay, let's this last of our paper. <laughs> You know the thing? Let's okay. I'll be like you. I have to start again. Okay. Oh. Mean value theorem for derivatives. Oh. Well, you could just cross it out and switch. You could cross out derivatives and integrals and just put it. It's not the same. <laughs> On your paper. Uh, mean value theorem for derivatives. It was this, right? If you had some kind of a function here like this, and you started here and you ended here, and this was a and this was b. If you figured out the average slope of this, average slope, somewhere in between there, there's there's a point C in here somewhere. It has to be somewhere. As long as this is continuous and differentiable, there has to be a point in there somewhere where what is true? Yeah, where that is the same as it didn't quite draw it touching but you get the idea where that slope is equal to that right tangent or in other words the derivative right the derivative there has to be a place somewhere where the slope of the tangent is the same as the average slope must be at least one you know all that preamble stuff at least one point C where where the uh, where the average slope equals the derivative. Should we say that I'm going to say derivative average. equals average slope. Yeah, it, yeah, it's all that. It has to be differentiable everywhere on there. Or in other words, here f prime at c has to equal. How do you find the average slope if you know what this is? Um, yeah, f of b minus f of a. So the two y values divided by b minus a. Okay? You could rearrange this function here if you wanted to. We need to go back now and think about it for integrals. This, When you figure out the average slope, it's basically saying if you equaled it out, right? If you took all of the speeds all the way along there and you evened them out, if it was traveling a constant speed, right? That's what you're doing. It's traveling slow at the beginning and then much faster at the end. This is pretending it went the same speed the whole time. That's what would happen. If we're going to look at this, a, a function, an integral here now, uh, let's make it, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but let's do that, okay? So here's a... And here's B. The function is higher here than here, right? Definitely, you can tell the function's higher there. Somewhere in between here, what, like, what, what would the average height of that thing be along there? I did make a little... Uh, well, it, it's it's pretty low there, right? The average value of this function, average value of a function. I'm not talking about the area or anything yet. I'm just saying, look at those two heights. Here it's pretty short. Here it's much taller, right? Somewhere in between there, it hits that average height, right? Somewhere in here it is, right? Somewhere here is the average height. Probably that's too high, right? It's that's probably too late, low. There's somewhere in there where it's where it's its average height. Okay, somewhere there is the average height. There's at least one point C where it's it hits its average height. 
How do you figure out that average height? Well, remember how you uh, how you figure out the area of a trapezoid like this? Why don't do it to you? Yeah, you, get it by you did this, right? There's the area of a trapezoid. Basically, it's like taking all of this area, except oh, not erasing oh. it. Oh. Well, it thinks I was crossing it out. And putting it over here, right? Oh. Okay. Pretend that this was a, if you have a jar filled with sand or something like that, and it's all wavy on the top here, you have the sand piled up like that. If you shake the thing and even out the sand, it uh, it's going to have some kind of average height there, the average height of the whole thing. It's the same thing here. If you took this function and equaled all the heights out, there's somewhere in there where there's the average height, where you have this rectangle here. Okay? So we have, th what's this height right here? That height is called F at C, right? And what's the distance in between there called? Well, it's B minus A, right? Whatever the difference is between those two. And what was the area underneath that whole curve here called? <laughs> called area. Not what was it called. What is it equal to? <laughs> Not the derivative of the function. The integral of... This is this is the integral <laughs> integral from a to b of f of x dx, right? That was not the we have three things here, right? Three things involved. Now, the the key is saying if I have the right thing here. Okay, now actually we should make this. You can draw it as a dotted line, but I'm going to try something here. Oh. Uh, Okay, we'll ignore that little black line there. We need some fine erasing. There we go. Okay. Well, what I'm hoping for is this. Let's pretend that... Oh, stupid thing snaps to a grid here, but... Let's uh, let's try this. Well, it doesn't... My, one note doesn't allow you to... Okay. You know what the better way to do this is? I got an idea here. Is to just draw it the old-fashioned way. Not nice Photoshop. Old the old-fashioned way is to actually draw it, okay? <laughs> what about... We just click on it here. Okay. As much work as this was, this is worth it here, right? Because it that's obviously too little area, right? I want to draw this so that the area of the black rectangle is the same as the area under the curve, right? This is obviously too much. This is too little. Somewhere in here is just right, okay? The area, I, I'm adjusting this so that the area under, the area in the black rectangle is the same as the area under the curve. So what's the area under the curve again called? Not area. That. So what's the area inside the black rectangle if we've parked this in the right place so that it's the average value here? The same thing. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Let's try this. The area of that rectangle is this, right? That's the area or that's the area of the rectangle. So we've got we've got um, f of c which we should keep it color coded so you can see it here. F of C times, times what? Times B minus A is equal to what? That integral, right? Integral from A to B. Okay? This is a tough lesson. This is the average height. times the width, right, equals the area. If I've written it, there's there's some C value here where the area of this rectangle equals the area under the curve, okay? There's some value where that is. If I... 
If I make this, thank you. You were waiting 10 minutes to say that, weren't you? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's just, I know you were. You're just very observant. I like that. That's good. Okay? Now, the thing is, you don't normally want to find the area of the rectangle because that doesn't tell us much. What you usually want to find is the average value of the function. Average height is also called average value of that function. The average value of a function. If you have some kind of a function here and you want to know its average value, you can do this, which will be continued, obviously. Stop.